In today's video we're going to be reviewing the Ravenwing Black Knights from the Dark Angel Supplement. Hello and welcome back to Planet 40k. So we're continuing on with our Dark Angels reviews, going back to the Ravenwing side of things. This time we're going to be touching upon the Black Knights. So as for today's shout out, we've got Parian Knight for their comment here, so shout out to you. So this review was actually voted on by yourselves from a poll that we did, and with 40% of the votes, the Ravenwing Black Knights won the poll. So that's what we're going to do today, so let's kick this off then. From the Elite section of the supplement, they're coming in with 6 power level of 40 points per model you've got the Black Knights. So they're going to be coming in units of up to 10 models. You can have a minimum unit of three of them. One of the models in the unit is going to be a Hunt Master. So let's go on to the keywords. So as for keywords, they've got the Melter Bomb keyword, which relates to a stratagem. They're a core unit, a biker unit. They're in the inner circle and a Ravenwing unit. As for the stats, movement of 14 inches, weapon skill 3+, plus, ballistic skill 3+, plus, strength 4, toughness 5, wounds 3, attacks 2, leadership 8, and a 3+, plus save. Then the Hunter Master there is going to gain an additional attack. Now there's no extra leadership there, it's just the attack he gains. Onto the abilities, so the Dark Angels chapter tactic of Grim Resolve. So if they stay stationary, they're going to get a plus one to their hit rolls. And each combat attrition test for the unit is going to be automatically passed. So this probably isn't likely to be used because they're going to be moving to get the Jinx save, which we'll come onto in a bit. However, they will be using the Sons of the Lion Super Doctrine which is done in the Devastator Doctrine, so turn 1. They're going to add 3 inches to their movement. Now the second part isn't actually relevant for them because they carry assault weapons. They can already advance and fire at minus 1 penalty. So let's move on to the next ability, which is Angels of Death. So the Shock Assault and the Combat Doctrines in particular are going to stand out for them. They can then Combat Squad if you take a unit of 10 of them, so you can split them in half. Two lots of 5, the Hunter Master will be in one of them, and you do that in your deployment. They've then got the Inner Circle ability, so they're automatically passing morale tests. They can fall back as normal, but unfortunately as they're not an infantry unit, they can be wounded on less than a 4+. plus. However, because they're on a bike, they're going to be gaining the Jink keyword, which gives them a 5 plus invulnerable save if they move, and if they advance it turns into a 4+, plus. but obviously staying stationary, you lose the invun save. They can then turbo boost, so when you do advance it's going to be a straight 6 inches rather than rolling for it. As for their war gear, so every model is equipped with a bolt pistol, which you're not going to use, unless you're in the second round of a combat. They've then got Plasma Talons and then the Frag and Crack Grenades. So I'll display the Bolt Pistol along with the Frag and Crack Grenades. You shouldn't be really using any of these. As for the Plasma Talon, it comes in two profiles like any other Plasma Weapon. They've both got 18 inch range Assault 2. The standard one is Strength 7, minus 3 AP and 1 damage. And the Supercharged variant is Strength 8, minus 3 AP and 2 damage. And of course if you roll a 1 to hit while you're supercharging it, you're going to destroy the bearer. So quite a risky play if you want to do that. I've done a quick bit of maths for you using a unit of 5. The unit of 5 is going to have 10 shots. Using the standard profile is going to have 10 shots. So you're roughly hitting 6.7 times and causing 4.4 wounds on Space Marine Power Armor. And because of that minus 3 AP, you're going to get 3.7 unsaved wounds, which should remove 1.9 on average. Now, of course, in the Devastator Doctrine, which is turn 1, it's going to go to a minus 4 AP. So you're going to remove that 6 plus armor save. So it's going to go straight through armor. Now if you're supercharging it, you're still going to have your 10 shots, you're still going to hit 6.7 times. You will cause slightly more wounds with 5.6, because now you're wounded on 2s. So against those same marines with power armour, you're doing 3.7 wounds, which has now gone up with the damage, because it's 2 damage each, so it's 7.4 damage, so you're killing about 2 models there. So not a massive change, but against infantry you don't really need to do that. Now if you were going against vehicles, you're going to do about 11 wounds on average against toughness 7 or less. That's with a five-man unit. So they do have war gear options. So the first one is any Ravenwing Black Knight can be equipped with one Corvus Hammer. Then the Sergeant in the pack, i.e. the Huntmaster, can be equipped with one of the following. So he can either take one of those hammers, or a Power Sword, or a Power Maul. And then finally, for every three models in the unit, one Black Knight can be equipped with an Astardi's Grenade Launcher instead of the Plasma Talon. So let's look at all those options. The first one being the Corvus Hammer. It's strength plus one, making it strength five, minus one AP, and two damage. Now this weapon is going to cost you five points per model, so again, I've gone with an example of using 5. That's going to cost you 25 points. With your 11 attacks, 1 extra because of the Hunt Master, you're going to get 7.3 hits. Going against Toughness 4, it's about 4.9 wounds before the armor save. Toughness 5 is about 3.7. So it's not too bad on infantry. Any more than Toughness 5, it's probably wasted. So you do have the option of putting a Power Sword or a Power Maul onto the Hunt Master. The power Sword also being strength 5, but it's minus 3 AP and 1 damage. So you gain more AP, but you lose a bit of damage with that one. Or the Power Maul, which is Strength 7, minus 1 AP, 1 damage. So you gain a little bit of extra strength, but again, you lose a bit of damage. And of course, in the Assault Doctrine, you're going to add an additional minus 1 AP to all of these weapons. 
potentially from turn three onward. You may be not taking it because you're Dark Angels you want to shoot, but if you do, turn three or even turn four onwards. The final one, which was for every three models, one of them can take an started grenade launcher. This replaces the Plasma Talon. Again, it comes in two profiles. It's got the Frag and the Crack profiles, both 30 inch range. The Frag is Assault D6, Strength 3, no AP1 damage with the Blast ability. So used on Light Infantry, maybe Toughness 3 Infantry really. And the Crack Grenade is only one shot, so it's Assault 1, Strength 6, minus 1 AP, D3 damage. Now I personally wouldn't bother with this one, I would want to make use of those Plasma Talons because there is a Stratagem coming up which kind of interacts really well with the Plasma Talons which we'll move on to in a bit. So as for the Stratagems, you've got Full Throttle, it's one command point, used on a Ravewing unit. If they advance you can immediately make a normal move up to 12 inches but they're not eligible to shoot or declare a charge. So you're only really going to need this to either get Line Breaker or get out of dodge or get in some sort of range whether it's an objective or some sort of aura. You then got Skill Riders which is one CP as well, used on a biker unit. If they did advance and they're selected as a target of a range attack, it's going to be a minus one to hit them. Not too bad. Weapons from the Dark Age. So this is the one I was talking about with the Plasma Talon. So in the shooting phase, when you're selected to shoot using Plasma weapons, you're going to add one to the damage. So now when you're supercharging these things, that becomes damage three. And of course, you still run that risk of rolling one. So I'd always use some sort of captain just to get those re-rolls in. But if you're going up against a vehicle, you can do a hell of a lot of damage. Damage three apiece, not too bad. You've then got the Hunt, which is the pre-game movement where you can make a normal move, but you can't be within 9 inches of enemy units. Now this one's pretty good because the Plasma Talon's range is only 18 inch range, so just to get into range for turn 1 perhaps, especially if your opponent's deployed really far back into their deployment zone. They've then got Swift Strike, which is 2 command points, if you've got 5 models or less, or otherwise it's going to be 3. In the fight phase, if you guys fight first and you've already fought, you can then use the stratagem and the move as if it was the movement phase, so you're going to avoid getting hit back and you're getting way out of dodge, so can be useful to keep your guys alive. You've then got Hit and Run Warfare, which is one command point used on a biker unit. If you fall back, you can still shoot even though you fell back. A little bit of Ultramarines kicking in there. Next one being Marked for Command. It's one command point. On the Huntmaster, you can give him one of the special issue War Gear Relics. So there's three that are actually eligible for him. The first one is Digital Weapons. So you can make one additional attack, and if you hit the attack, you simply score a mortal wound on the target. Mastercrafted weapons, which is adding one to the damage. Whatever the weapons you're taking with them, you can add one to that. Then the third one is the Bolts of Judgment. Select one of your Bolt weapons, so your Bolt Pistol. If you do, you make one attack with the Bolt Pistol weapon. It's going to have an AP of minus two and a damage of three. It's also going to wound on a two plus, unless it's a vehicle or a monster. So obviously if you're using this one, then you can't actually use your Plasma Talon, so you are sacrificing that for that battle round but it could be a quick easy way of getting 3 damage out. Next you've got Stasis Shell, it's 2 command points, using the shooting phase with a Raven Wing model, when they choose to shoot with their Astartes Grenade Launcher, instead of making normal attacks you make 1 attack with the weapon and if a hit is scored, the target is caught in Stasis. And basically when they're caught in Stasis, the units cannot fall back. A little bit of a situational one, it can be really used for some sort of power play. Then finally Melter Bombs, as they've got the Melter Bomb keyword, they can use this when they're selected to fight, Select one model in the unit. That model can make one attack only, and it's got to target an enemy vehicle. And if a hit is scored, the enemy unit is going to suffer 2d3 mortal wounds. Then the attack sequence ends. Now I'm not sure how good this one is because they shouldn't really be getting into close combat with vehicles because they're only strength 5 in melee, but the situation may arise. On to some Codex Synergy next. So to start us off here, we've got the Talonmaster. This land speeder, which is a lieutenant in the land speeder, has the tactical precision aura, so it allows you to reroll the wound rolls of a one, which can be useful. But the Grandmaster, the Raven Wing, which allows all rerolls of your hit rolls, or alternatively, you can use a captain on the bike to reroll ones. You've then got the Dark Shroud with the icon of the old Caliban aura, which will give your unit a minus one to hit them. Then you've got everyone's favourite, the Raven Wing Apothecary, with all those apothecary goodnesses. So you've got the combat restoratives to heal wounds every turn. You got the 6 plus feel no pain save, and then of course you can bring a model back every turn for only one command point. You've then got chaplains on bikes. They've got all sorts of litanies that will help you hit, help you wound, whether it's in melee or at range. And they can help you make a charge with a canticle of hate. Then the final bit of unit synergy would be a librarian in Terminator armor. Now you can't get one on a bike, but it can come down from deep strike with a teleportarium. And you can use either the righteous repugnance, allow you to reroll your hit rolls and your boom rolls in melee. Really good for getting rid of infantry. Or you can use the trusty space marine bale of time power, which allows you to reroll your advance and charge rolls. Now the advance roll you don't need because you get a straight six of turbo boost but the charge roll could be handy, and if you're in a second round of combat, you're going to be fighting first. You can also actually use Null Zone, which is going to remove those Invon saves. May not be needed in combat, but for those Plasma Talons, he could be turning off their Invon saves, 
Getting the minus 3 AP from the weapon. Just bear in mind if you're also getting within 6 inches of the librarian, then you're also going to be turning off your own in one save with the jinx save. So let's go on to the summary for the unit then. So starting off with the good, loads of synergy with Rainwing, especially as they're a core unit, there's so many things you can do with them. They're good in both melee and at range, especially the range with the plasma talons. Now that strategy on weapons for the Dark Age in particular is going to be a big hit, turning the damage into damage 3 weapons when you supercharge them. They're of course very quick because they're on bikes and they can advance in the first turn and still fire which is pretty mega. They've then got the Jink which is going to give them an invulnerable save which could be upgraded to a 4 plus if they advance which is quite easy to do with these guys. They've got the Melter Bomb, I put it in the good section, I don't think it's all that but it's still something as an additional ability. Then finally they're a key unit for the hunt stratagem so you can get that pre-game movement just to get in range with the target you want to be going against. As for some of the bad, overcooking with these plasma talons is very easy to do, especially with a lot of shots. 10 shots with a unit of 5, you can expect 1 or 2 ones in there, so you really need to have some sort of buffing character for the hit rolls to avoid any casualties. Now they're only strength 5 in melee, which isn't the worst thing. I say only as if it's a bad thing, strength 5 is still pretty good for an anti-infantry weapon, but if you get caught up in a fight with the dreadnoughts for example, you're probably going to need that stratagem to get out of dodge. And finally the plasma talons are only short to mid range at 18 inch range. Now again it probably isn't the biggest problem because you're on a bike. You can move 14 inches anyway. And you've got the advance going off as well. But if you're choosing not to do all that stuff it's going to have an 18 inch range. Which is okay, not the best. So going on to the rating. I think they're a solid unit so I'm going to go over Planet 40k rating of 4 stars. So that's the end of the video today guys. Thank you all for watching. Sub if you are new and I'll see you in the next one.